The finish is wonderful. And uh, this is Scott Jordan. You're watching live here at Cellars of Sonoma. Uh, we are talking with John Banbury from Bonneau Wines. And uh, we're talking about the 2008 and 2009 Lost Canaro Chardonnay, uh, barrel fermented Chardonnay, and uh, soon to be released uh, 2009. Before the break, I asked a question, which we'll answer right now. Uh, which of the following California area, uh, which, which of the following California area is known for world-class Cabernet Sauvignon, Russian River Valley? We know that's not true. It's a little too cold. Although I did meet a guy, and I'll think of the name of the winery that at an event who swears he's got a cab from Russian River that's a killer wine, and he's going to take me to the vineyard, show me the wine, and and do a tasting. I'll think of the name here in a, in a minute. Um, but that's the first one I've seen. I don't think you've seen that. So that's not the answer. Rutherford Caneros, uh, you make a cab from Caneros. But it is uh, not typically a climate that is conducive to making good. No, you better be in the right spot at the right elevation and facing the sun. And yeah, yeah. and then San Joaquin uh, Valley, um, not going to buy that. So the answer is Rutherford. Rutherford's over in the Napa Valley. Uh, just north of uh, the uh, Stag's Leap District, uh, probably one of my one of my favorite areas in Napa by far. Um, they have these very earthy, rich, you know, notes. Uh, the wine is pretty nice over there in Rutherford. Not a bad place. Um, you get you get some fruit. Um, don't you have a, a, a some stagecoach fruit in your Napa? Uh, I do. As a matter of fact, my first. Um vintage of, of Cabernet came from the Groth Vineyard, which is in Rutherford. Nice. I always liked Rutherford. I, when I started in the business, I worked for Pine Ridge, and they own uh, some land there in Rutherford and make, make a world-class Rutherford cab. It's quite nice. So I was kind of spoiled right out of the gate with these really amazing wines in that region, but always favored the Rutherford. Real distinct. Um, we used to do Rutherford tastings where we tasted uh, Rutherford fruit from various producers, and we did them blind. And the characteristic in the wine was pretty similar, though. I mean, it was it was interesting that what that region does. So that's that answer is uh, Rutherford. Although I will I will look up the name of the guy who told me he's got cab from Russian River, but I don't think I've seen too many. It's a little too cold. I mean, you know, it doesn't get quite as warm over there. You'd have to have the perfect scenario to 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 even bother. Uh, it wouldn't sell real good. You put that on the label, it's a little bit of trouble. So Chardonnay, um, I know most of you are looking out your door and going, my God, it's snowing out or there's snow on the ground. It's freezing cold. What in the world are you talking about Chardonnay? But, you know, it, uh, March 1st is coming up next week. And uh, here we are, man. I mean, it, you know, the spring's coming and uh, you got to start planning. And, uh, in fact, our wine club shipment's coming up in March. We'll have a Chardonnay in there. Uh, you know, that's the time of the year. June shipment will come out. There'll be a shard in that one as well. Um, well I've actually and, got a pairing suggestion for the cool weather with yeah, Chardonnay. There we go. And that's a, a spi spicy soup like uh, lobster bisque. It, this Chardonnay is a fantastic pairing with that. And um, I would think there are a lot of uh, soups and, uh, that, that would uh, pair up well with Chardonnay. And think of that. And then have a have a Chardonnay, and then a red wine with your main uh, course, your main entree. I agree. I agree. And and you know, don't think. I know you guys. Are, some some of you have been tuning in. Uh, you guys are in some pretty cold regions, but um, yeah, you're right, John. I, and I think it's a better compliment. And uh, we want people to use, take advantage of these wines, and use them in the right parts of your meal. In the beginning of your meal, this is a great way to kind of cleanse the palate a little bit and, and start really fresh. And then I agree, go into a Pinot or in, into, um, you know, a red wine. And uh, Bono makes uh, a fabulous Pinot, which we sell here, and uh, Zinfandel and uh, several cabs. So we, we're, we, we've got it covered pretty well. You, you've got the whole gamut. And, uh, you know, I, I noticed that most people don't talk about it, but uh, we find when our winemaker dinners, that mixing uh, whites and reds are just fine. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some people worry they're going to get a headache or something, but that's uh, uh, if you drink and have 
a well-made clean wine, you're not going to have trouble with with a headache. Yeah, I, I agree. I, have I you agree. noticed uh, in the years that you've been operating cellars of Sonoma mm -hmm. that people aren't walking around with headaches around here? No, they sure aren't. And quality is the issue. It's the bottom line, no doubt about it. Right. You know, this warmed up a little bit. And one of the tricks, what, what John was talking about earlier, uh, he brought in the the 09, and it had been much colder uh, in his in his uh, cellar, cellar mm -hmm. and than what we normally keep in temperature and and pour here, and it really changes the wine. I mm -hmm. mean, it really really changes the wine dramatically. Yeah, and the now best, that it's that uh, temperature to drink this wine is probably 58 to 62 degrees. And uh, we were a little bit cooler than but, that but when I brought it in. But it's starting to warm up, though, and the fruit is opening up then. I'm noticing the nose is much bigger. Um, yeah, I'm getting um, tropical fruit, a kind of a yellow cling peach. Yeah, yeah. Poached yeah, pear. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a well-balanced, and I would say even an elegant wine. It's very refined. Boy, we're going to do really well at that. So that, that wine is releasing... Uh, next month, we'll have them side by side uh, for a time until until this is sold out, and uh, there's going to be a, a, a little price uh, reduction there at 28 bucks. You got to love that, and uh, that again, that's a super value for all state fruit. You got to love that, and uh, you can't beat that. I don't care where you, you can go anywhere you want. Look at all you want. You're not going to see that at 28 dollars. I, I can assure you of that. If you do find it, bring it in. I'll buy it from you. But no one's done that, and I've been doing this two years, so I guarantee you, uh, it's hard to do. So we're going to take we're ready to take another little break. Again, we're not going anywhere. We're just simply uh, ending our broadcast, uh, the recording side, to make these a little smaller. But I'm going to ask you a question before we take a break, and uh, and what is the question is what is Cremant? What is Cremant? A type of sherry, a type of sparkling wine, a method of filtering wine, or none of the above. So, Cremant is the question. What is Cremant? Think about it, and I'll answer it on the other side of the break. And we're going to switch to uh, another.